Welcome everybody. This is the Minnesota Transformation Initiatives quarterly training on, on employer engagement. So welcome. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Minnesota Transformation Initiative, it's a project that's funded by the Minnesota Department of Human Services um, to expand the capacity for competitive integrated employment um, and reduce the number of people with disabilities receiving some minimum wages across Minnesota. Um, we do a lot of work with providers around organizational transformation and also some other work with other groups, including lead agencies, families, and individuals. But this is part of our statewide training. Um, and a lot of the work that we do, especially with providers, is based on these 10 essential elements of organizational transformation, um, which were developed out of research by our colleagues at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. So if you've been to any of our trainings before, you've likely heard about this framework or seen this slide. And so I just wanted to highlight where within this framework, today's topic on employer engagement fits, I mean, employer engagement in a lot of ways can fit in a number of these different categories, but, but most clearly it fits within the active person-centered job development element and also customer focus and engagement if we're considering employers to be the customer in this situation. So we've got an excellent um, training presentation for you all today. We have three fantastic speakers um, from provider organizations in Minnesota. Um, from Phase Industries, we have Denise Johnson and Caitlin Schwenninger, and then Dominique Berg is joining us um, from Southern Minnesota at Step Inc. Um, so they'll, all, each of these three will be talking about different aspects of engaging employers to help people with disabilities find competitive integrated employment. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to them to, to share their knowledge and experience and expertise. Um, and just briefly before I do that, want to highlight that there will be opportunities for questions um, at the end of the presentation. So um, feel free to put those they're, they're on the Zoom toolbar. There is a Q&A button. So feel free throughout the, throughout the training as you're thinking of things to drop those questions into that Q&A section. And we'll um, visit the, those at the end unless the presenters want to you know, stop in the middle to do questions. That's fine too, whatever works for them. Um, but drop your questions in the Q&A. Um, at the end of the training, there'll also be an opportunity if you'd rather un, um, kind of raise your hand. There's a raise hand feature on the mute toolbar as well. Um, and we can unmute you and you can talk if it's much easier to do that rather than type something out. Um, so think about those questions as they come. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that the, the team from FaZe can share theirs. And I'll turn it over to them. Okay. Can you see everything? Can everybody see? Did you want to put it in presentation mode? I tried it first. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, we got it. Hi, everyone. I'm Denise Johnson. I'm the Employment and Development Director at Phase Industries. Uh, today, you're going to hear some uh, various aspects of employer engagement. I will share with you um, some information about messaging we've experienced uh, with businesses. Caitlin's gonna uh, share with us some marketing strategies. And Dominique is gonna share, you know, the real hands-on uh, takeaway how-tos uh, to wrap it up. Let's go to the next slide. Just a little bit about, a little background on phase industries. We're, <clears throat> A service provider that's been providing um, services to people with disabilities for over 55 years in East, East Central Minnesota. Uh, our organization was founded by family members um, in the communities where we have licensed sites. So with that many years in, in a rural community, you can understand um, how there's some deep roots about who we are and what we do. So those of us that are, those people that have been around for a while that know us, you'll see in the grocery store or at the local cafe, you know, hey, you do really good things for those kids, even though they're adults. You guys know what I'm talking about in small town Minnesota. <clears throat> That's a little feel for uh, who we are. Next slide. So we're a grant recipient, and at the beginning of the grant, I lost my mouse. Um, 
the community understood us as a place where people with disabilities go Monday through Friday from nine until three. Their, their opinion was, well, you know, those people can't work or if they do, they can't do much work. So we, people have to bring work to them and that, and that's about what they can do. And, and we, without knowing, reinforced that um, by really marketing that way and, and, and sharing this is the kind of work that we need. So we reinforced that, that way of thinking um, unintentionally. Um, other people just weren't really sure what we did at our sites, but you know, we're doing good things for people, you know, the, the people from the community, especially the, the long, longer term people would share. But what we really were, we we're doing really some really good things. We were doing pre bulk work, center based work, and uh, work crews teaching some real transferable skills. When I look at the gentleman to the right on this slide, he's a member of our Heritage Barnwood crew. That crew is made up of men and women that go out in the community, tear down old barns, like tear down old barns. They sort the wood, they take the nails out, they uh, sand the wood, they saw the wood, they design it, they build furniture out of it. You'll see a piece on that photo. They finish it. They maintain an inventory and they sell it. You think about all of the skills that a person needs to be able to conduct those tasks. And that is a lot of transferable skills uh, for competitive integrated employment. We were mostly doing um, traditional job placements and doing some long-term su supports for people that um, have have been employed competitively. But just, just those two pieces there, the, the community understanding of us and who we were, you can see the disconnect already um, and how we were marketing, how, how we as an organization or our employees or, you know, there's a, a variety of different ways of how we're marketing who we are and what we do, which Caitlin will get into in just a little bit. But there was a disconnect of what we were doing and, and, and what the perception was. So when we started the grant, we really wanted to make an emphasis um, to businesses about how who we're becoming, not who we've been, right? We don't want to reinforce the idea that uh, our folks can't work um, by bringing work in. We want, to, we want to be a resource to them and, and let them know that we have quality workers to fill their their employment needs, especially with the um, job openings as great as they've been. So feedback, I, I go to present at one of our, our local chambers and it's a full house. And it's my first time presenting on who we are or who, we, who, we, who are we becoming and really focused on how we are a resource to fill their needs. And what I was reminded of very quickly was that in a small rural community, those businesses, the school teachers, the community members are, are tightly intertwined. Those business um, leaders, managers, owners, what have you, they either know somebody that is or maybe supported by an organization, their neighbors with them, they're maybe married to a teacher, they're, you know, you get the understanding that that it's all, it's a, it's a tight community. So realize I'm not just talking to businesses. There was a concern expressed very clearly at this chamber presentation about, well, yeah, okay, you're a resource, but are you stopping all your other services? Because they're really that's really important too. So then I realized, okay, we got to rethink this. Uh, at the same time, we're getting feedback from schools and parents uh, where they they wanted their students to um, be able to move on to competitive integrated employment, and others that weren't ready for that step yet but definitely wanted 
community life engagement, real meaningful activities in their communities. So we needed to rethink what our messaging was. So where we aim to be, obviously, you know, as a part of the grant, we want to um, increase the number of people making um, working for competitive wages. Increase the number of individuals supported in our day programs into integrated employment. And that, that's an important piece. The majority of people that we've had in our day services likely never were never given the option about pursuing employment. It was probably just the natural progression of things to go from school and transition into a day program. And that implied message is you can't work. So really putting a focus on educating and supporting and building experiences and self-esteem around considering thinking about work and moving into work um, is a really valuable piece. You know, they can still change their mind and say, no, I don't want to work. I don't want to work, you know, out in the community. But at least they're given uh, more of an opportunity and more information and more life experience to make that decision themselves. Uh, we also want to see an increase of um, people supported by experiencing real community life engagement, um, not just going on an outing, but, you know, it's, it's supporting the whole person. We all need a work-life balance. We need to be able to work, to pay our bills, and spend money how we want to. But we also need to have that other piece that is at work. And that's what we want to support. <clears throat> we needed to pivot our messaging. Um, rather than just focusing you know, to businesses how we were going to be their resource, it's almost like I needed to treat them like a whole person too, right? Because they're, they're business leaders. They're the person you go to church with. They're the person you run into at the grocery store. We're all connected. So we shifted a little bit in our messaging from, um, we went from primarily focusing on um, center-based work. We still are focusing on um providing, uh, being a resource to businesses, that that's our highlight. Like we really wanna drive that home. Being in a community where it's been so ingrained in people's minds that our folks aren't capable of that, we do have to put a lot of push into that. But we're still gonna do center-based work too because we're not gonna leave anybody behind. We wanna be able to support individuals that don't wanna work, people that may wanna work um, not in competitive integrated employment, but we really want to make sure that um, people get a voice in making their decision for themselves. We also want to be clear in our messaging that we're not ending any of our services. We're really adding to our menu and creating more opportunities. So, so marketing and messaging to our employees. You think about it, you have people that work in different departments, let's say. So if you have somebody that's focused on finding employment for people, if somebody asks them in the community about what the, our organization does, likely their response is gonna be <clears throat> something around the work that they do. If a person that is providing supports to somebody who isn't working and maybe has high support needs, they're gonna get a different message. Um, to the community. And so you, you can see where our communities may be um, receiving inconsistent information about who we are and what we do. And thank goodness we brought on um, Caitlin, a, a marketing director to help, uh, help us clean that up and streamline it so everybody's getting the same message. So just to share an example of how we've been um, most successful and helping businesses and smaller communities um, understand who we are and what we do and hire our individuals really has been through providing work experiences. Work experiences can be um, short-term, uh, short time-limited, 
It can be volunteer work. It can be a job tryout. It can be a job shadow. There's a variety of ways that we can create those work opportunities. And what we were finding is as our individuals were experiencing those work um, opportunities, the businesses we're starting to get a better understanding of who we are and what we do and what our folks are really capable of. Through that short-term experience, the businesses were seeing where there were gaps in their business. The tasks that weren't getting done are now getting done or getting done quicker. And through that experience, um, individuals were getting hired within a matter of two weeks. One example is that a uh, a local food co-op, it's a small grocery store, small um, deli, coffee shop. And we had a, a gal that needed a, a work experience for oh, two, three weeks. The manager had no experience in working with people with disabilities. <clears throat> and by the end of the two weeks, he couldn't say enough good things about what it did for that business, for the co-op. She brought, the person supported, brought fun to work. She wanted to have um, like once a week theme days where it might be dressed like you're in the, uh, from the 70s or crazy hair day or something. So people started having fun at work. She, she, she eventually got hired on and, and said this was her dream job. And with the tasks that she was completing, she was having such a great time that the her co-workers who used to like you know dread doing some of the tasks oh they're working alongside of her she's having a blast and so now they're having a good time too the manager shared how how much it boosted um the staff morale there and how their productivity uh, increased and improved in that um at the co-op so so he's a, uh, the manager is a very active member in our local chamber and he shares with the businesses what his experience has been with us. And so to me, that was some of the best um, ways of showing hands on, here's who we are, what we do, and here's how we can be a resource to you and I'll spread the word. <laughs> so now I will turn it over to Caitlin. Hello, I'm Caitlin Schwinniger, the Marketing and Fund Development Director for Phase Industries. Um, pretty new role still. They added this position in 2023, and I came on board in May of 2023, thanks to the grant that we received. And uh, personally, and as a company, we're all still learning the functions of marketing and how it fits into this company and the tasks related to this position, too. Um, I participate regularly in community events, including uh, monthly chamber meetings for different chambers because we cover such a, a wide span of land here in Minnesota. And then um, community days out and other, um, you know, like we did a Cambridge night out customer appreciation thing with a bunch of local businesses um, went out and essentially set up little tents and it was really fun. And we got to talk to a lot of people, a lot of other businesses um, and other events like that. Uh, I try to stay up on. And then I also regularly visit each of our license sites to kind of get the, keep the word out there about branding and um, continue building relationships. And then I'm also working always continuously updating our website content to make sure it's uh, up to date with what we're doing and uh, recently became certified with web accessibility um, certificate to make our website more friendly for, um, well, ADA accessibility measures. So working on that, um, we currently have social media and website presence or online presence on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Apple, and, and then our news and events blog, um, as well as an internal company newsletter that also gets shared on our website too, to keep up with what we're doing. And then our brand guide has been a really big part of um, the marketing and transformation in messaging. 
and kind of getting everybody in the company on the same page. There hasn't been an updated brand guide um, since the merge of phase and industries to make phase industries um, like six, six, eight years ago. Um, so this is really fun to learn all of this stuff about the company and develop this so that we can all be on the same page in how we talk about us as a company, how we talk about work, all those fun things and some information that is included in the brand guide is our why as a company why are we here why are we doing the things we're doing um, our vision mission and values and uh, the things that our company guarantees to um, our stakeholders everybody we work with and especially our supported individuals it includes our elevator speech which is um, the vision mission values and elevator speech are really big parts of uh, the training that is going out with the branding and marketing information um, in order for everybody who's going out into the community to be talking about this, this us the same way with the same messaging so that we're creating that strong brand presence to stay top of mind when we're trying to um, create new connections and build relationships. And uh, a section in there also includes how we talk to our stakeholders. There is specific messaging for each of our stakeholder groups, our supported individuals, our parents, our guardians of supported individuals, um, our employees and potential employees, our teachers and counselors, and our case manager. There's a little bit more details um, on that in the brand guide with different ideas on how we position ourselves to speak to them and the messaging we want to convey. The brand guide also includes our logos, our brand colors, and our fonts for consistency on anybody who's creating documents. Um, our br the brand tone, personality, and imagery is also touched on in there. And that's really important because it allows us to position ourselves when we're talking with people in the community and business owners to put whoever we're supporting first, put our individuals first. We are not the hero in this story if you will we are a supported uh, a supporting character and each individual is the hero of their own story so we like to position our message in that way as well and then um, it also includes brand the brand guide also includes the brand standards in uh, email signature and where we are um, in, on socials so all of our employees can follow that and um, we can try to have a consistent email signature Uh, other uh, marketing eff marketing and transformation efforts, I kind of touched on some in the last slide, but um, in addition to regular chamber attendance, I've been going out to other chamber events. Um, one that I recently went to was another grand opening for a different company, and that was actually really fun. And it I wasn't sure how it could fit into this, but I ended up meeting some key players in other businesses in the community that you know I didn't know were gonna be there because you never know who's gonna show up. Um, so that was actually really valuable. Um, so I would recommend going to other chamber events hosted by other uh, organizations as well. Um, so far we've had uh, one grand reopening that we qualified for because we reconstructed the inside of one of our buildings and that was fun um it was a lot of planning and a lot of work and it just happened to snow that day so we didn't have um near as many people as we'd wanted but we did have some really key participants in the audience and presenting that um are, is helping with our connections to the community and businesses um like i said continuously updating and ma maintaining our online presence in socials and our website. I've started creating videos um, of successful commute, no, competitive integrated employment um, to utilize as resources for anybody considering employment, but especially people in our day support to transition to competitive integrated employment <laughs> um and then also writing articles that kind of convey the same message um, just not a video style um talked about the updated brand guide and messaging and how um teaching staff new procedures or updated procedures keeps everybody um, on the same page with how we talk about ourselves and then 
a new idea that I just started on this week, which isn't a new idea in the world, but it's something I was trying to put our own little spin on is lunch and learn. So I'm excited to dive into that. And that is all I have. And we're gonna switch over to Dominique now. Oh my gosh, if I can figure this out. All right, thank you. I was trying to decide if I was going to do a PowerPoint or not, because we don't have a marketing person. And after looking at Caitlin's PowerPoint, I decided it was a good call not to do any PowerPoint at all. So um, uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak today. Um, just a brief little introduction of myself, other than what was already said. Um, you know, I started at Step in, uh, Step in Incorporated about seven years ago, been in this industry about 15 years. And wow, has it changed um, from the last org that I was at to Step Industries now and under new direction, it's changed even more and happy to be oh. here serving under a new uh, director as well. Um, uh, in in my past, uh, I've I've run restaurants, uh, um, and and that's my experience. And I I kind of use that experience because uh, in in the past, um, you know, we've had um, 16, 17 year olds that just entered the employment field, and 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 I took it as a manager to help guide them and bring them into employment. And and here we are with people just coming into employment for the first time and kind of co inciting the same kind of things it's exciting bringing people into employment and and guiding them through their first individual jobs and and all that kind of stuff so i have that passion to bring people aboard for the first time um as far as credentials and stuff everything that you're going to hear from me today is things that i've learned from people like Denise and other people throughout the industry, I take and absorb things. I'm 56 years old and I'm going to retire doing this kind of job. And I still feel that until I retire that I'm going to be a student of employment and learn until the day I'm done. So that is just a brief outlook of who I am. And that's why I'm here today. Um, a short view of Step Incorporated, 62 year old company. I'm going on 63 years old. When I first started here, uh, we um, I was the only person in employment, and I was to guide employment for this company, uh, and and it was my 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 thing to start individual employment and get the ball rolling. We had crew jobs, uh, people were paid minimum wage at that time, um, and 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 so we had some community. Uh, connections, but it was to get things rolling more for individual jobs. Uh, we had day services, full day services, very consistent day services, and we were serving uh, two counties at that time, and we were doing some uh, stuff with VRS, and we were a limited limited pro provider so we were we were doing what we needed to do and 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 we were very steady um, but it was our direction to move on and, and move forward that way and that was my direction um and before i tell you where we're looking at today my direction was that you know if you come to my office and i have big letters in my office that you know all people are employable and today i get asked that do i really believe that you know what I mean? And I get different teams asking me that and stuff like that. And 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 my answer is yes. All people are employable. Uh, what measure? That is their journey. Uh, that is their journey on what is employed, employable and stuff like that. But truly, everybody is employable. And I do believe that that is the direction when you're building a team and your organization, stuff like that, that we must believe in as an organization, as hard as that journey is, that each person is employable. Um, and that starts from direct support workers. That starts with job coaches. That starts with administration people all the way up to the top, to the, your director. Um, everybody needs to be on board with that because I need all that support to build a great employment program and go out to the community. And I need everybody to believe that. Um, and my slogan with my team and stuff is that you must believe it to sell it. 
And we got to go out there and do that. And I believe that has been the success for Step Incorporated as we've navigated through this um, long and hard journey, never easy for employment, um, and, and, and do that. Thus saying that, Step Incorporated now, seven years later, um, we we started with one person when I started was working uh, at a hotel as a breakfast hostess. Um, we now have 37 people that have their own individual jobs, not crew jobs. We still have our crew jobs. We have 25 contracts. People are still earning minimum wage and doing crew jobs because that's what they select to do. So we still have that service. But we have 37 different people uh, working individual jobs in dietary, laundry, um, all kinds of fields. They're averaging between $15 to $17 per hour. Um, they have sick pay. They have vacation pay. They have all the, all the things that are introduced to them for employment at this time. And, and, and the need is, is more and more. Day services are still open. We just, as Denise said, we have those services still going because people still need those services and step as has gone that road that we will still do those services for everyone that wants that service. And that is our direction. And in rural Fairmont, uh, if we were to cut that off, that would be a huge disservice to this community and to this area because that is a want and need in this area as well. And so that will continue as we navigate into the future uh, for Step Incorporated. Uh, we serviced back in the day six or four, uh, two counties. We now, I'm happy to say, uh, with VRS and because of other waiver issues and stuff like that, um, we just accepted uh, uh, the sixth county that we will start going into for services for employment. So very excited um, to go into that. Um, so we are expanding uh, considerably. Um, we are now... Uh, um, no longer going to be a limited provider for VRS. We are going to be CARF accredited and we will uh, start expanding um, our services unlimited, which excites me because now I can introduce many more programs for, uh, for clients and services and have a lot of ideas that I wanted to do seven years ago, but was limited to doing that and bringing a lot more training to, to clients and stuff that will help them in the job market and employment. Um, I'm no longer work by myself. I We hired one employment consultant, two employment consultants, and now we have four employment consultants. So now the team has gotten larger because of the area that we have to cover and we can provide more services. And our motto is to try to keep no one on a waiting list. Uh, our clients have waited too long through COVID and because of other companies that uh, could not handle it anymore. Um, I would like to get everybody at the table as soon as possible and get them going one way or another with anything that they need uh, to, to have happen. Um, why am I here today? Well, because you asked me to be here, of course. Um, but to share uh, um, SEP Incorporated's uh, employment journey and how we got there, of course, but to encourage others to, to look at employment and, and how that would work for their organization, but in a different way, you know, not jamming it down people's throats and not, you know, saying what you should and should not do, but just giving you the information in the road that we take. Uh, I have a huge understanding for any organization in this state and going through COVID and going through all the services that people have and their history, as Denise said, you know, she talked to, and Caitlin talked about their history and steps history and everybody's history in small rural areas and metro areas. And you need to navigate what's according to your organization and be compassionate to the community, the teams, the families. And there's not a right or wrong way, but you need to do that in your organization. So I'm merely here to tell you what we did. Um, and, and you take bits and pieces, whatever I give you today, and, and go forward with your organization and utilize it the best way you can. Um, and have an understanding, too, that, you know, it, it is not easy work. It is not just simply, you know, uh, 
you know, there are great stories out there, but there are a lot of other stories that took a lot of work and, and hard work from a lot of people on this team. I'm just a figurehead, but there are a lot of people underneath and Denise knows that too, that we might speak here today, but there are a lot of people behind us that do all the other stuff that we that we talk about. We just happen to be here talking about it today. And so I'm very grateful if it wasn't for the people that believe in the programs that we do, that we talk about, we would not be here today speaking about it. So with that being said, you know, when we go out and we talk to to employers and and try to sell what we're doing and stuff like that. You know, I've learned in 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 the years. You know, you know, it's all about the language that we're talking about. You know, um, you know, uh, getting getting jobs for people with disabilities. Maybe we should switch to you know people with abilities. And and we're really talking about you know what works for for the 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 individual but also the employer you know it's more of what the employer needs and i'm huge on on the employer in production and quality and and what they need and navigate that way because obviously we're paying you know clients now 14 to 17 dollars an hour and 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 they're expecting quality and production and and that's what we're going to carve out for people and 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 bring to the table and 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 really bring that to the table that way when we first started out and we had one person you know how am i going to get this across to people and it all started at, at a, a nursing home and we had a, a we had a uh a uh, crew working there, but somebody really wanted to to work there as an individual job, and they they wanted to apply by themselves, and they wanted to work there. They didn't want to be part of the crew, but they wanted to be there. And it's all about communication, and that's what sparked really the individual jobs, and that's what really I learned real quick because I had not done this before. And all it did was take one conversation, 10, 15 minute conversation with actually the director of the place and sat down and 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 sold individual jobs and individual employment to that person because we were going to give them a client or represent a client that was going to work for them and fit what they needed not what we needed but it's going to fit what they needed they needed these specific shifts they needed specific times and we were going to help train this individual we were going to help support this individual and they bid on it and from that point on we grew and even in that for that employer we are have six, seven people right there, they're employed there because they kept coming back and they kept coming back with our support and with our training and stuff like that, because they knew that we, we had something going on there because it fit their needs. And that's what we really have to look at. Uh, you have to be all in when you're talking about employment. Um, it's not going to fit the day service hours uh, it's not going to fit the nine to three hours and stuff like that. And I think that's a really hard thing. It's very challenging um, when it comes to hiring and stuff like that. Uh, but it, it it is the way we here navigate that. Um, and then it's a commitment from the organization to the client, organization to the client and the employer that we serve for true employment. And when I say true employment <clears throat> is that when we search for jobs, meaning my team of uh, employment consultants and stuff like that, we search for jobs for what will fit the uh, client, what they're looking for and what the employer is looking for. And that means that we will search for a job seven days a week. Uh, we we will search for a job from 9 a.m. to uh, or 5, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. at night. And if you look at our schedules and the support we do, I'm telling you that it is those hours. Because if our client says that they only want a weekend job, we will find them a weekend job. If our employer says, well, I have an opening do you have a client that needs a job, but I have an opening for this? This is exactly what we do. And when I say that, that means that we also, if we need support, 
for that client and stuff like that, that Step Incorporated will go in and support that person as well. So that is a commitment for true employment because we know that in, in, in uh, supporting a client that we are committed from zero to 100% job coaching um, a, a person. Um, you know, it can be very little or it can be a lot. And we have a full parameter, but we're fully committed to that. We follow up a lot with our, our employers. We, um, we follow up a lot with our clients. We have some people we drop in, we just check with them, but the employers appreciate that. They appreciate, appreciate that communication because I've learned in the past that uh, we, you know, so many times that employers have always been reluctant to say what the true, uh, um, how their uh, client has been doing just because of who we are. And we don't want that anymore. We want true feedback on how the how their clients are doing. And so that's why we follow up all the time with them. We also realize the fact that uh, with that many clients working and we are do touch base and stuff like that, that there's a true reality of, of that too. And we must, as an organization, also have to realize too that our clients will have discipline in the workplace. They will have write-ups. They will have criticisms. They will have terminations. Um, and we... We welcome that because if it's needed, that's what we do. I have had, I have had employers come back to me and say, well, you know, we need to, we need to readjust some things. We need to communicate to this client. How do we do this? And my simple explanation is it is your employee. What would you do with the rest of your employees? We're here to support you if you need to evaluate somebody, if you need to write up this person, we will help navigate it, but you that is your employee. And these are great learning things for clients that we support. This is a true employment. And you know, out of 37 people in 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 the seven years that we've had, you know, we've only had one termination. And I believe it is because of the support that we've given them, the training that we've given them. And, you know, and, it, and and as we go, there might be other terminations because, you know, we're all people. We all have uh, whatever happens, happens. But we, you know, and we all have our own things, you know what I mean? But it is. I want people to learn about it. And if we get terminated and if we want to quit a job, all I can say is that we have built a resume and it is just another job, another stepping block, uh, uh, another step on a resume. And that's why I tell people, because, you know, because we're not committed to one job. Everybody wants to quit a job, go to the next job, because now you have a resume and you build a resume. This is great employment for for clients. I'm tired of this job. I want to move to the next job. Let's support them and let's move on. You know what I mean? We're not stuck at jobs anymore. Just because I got you this one, let's move on. You have a foundation you can move on. But we we will be criticized. The clients will be criticized and as an org, we can't take that personally. Well, we got you this job and now, you know, now the employer's criticizing stuff like that. That is part of employment. And we can go in, we can support it as much as possible, but we're there to support them as we can. Um, and the results in communicating with the employers and stuff like that is that we're well known for our employment. Step now, you know, uh, is very well known for employment more than seven years ago. Uh, we have much success with, the, with our clients. Um, we we are known throughout the counties. Um, in fact, we employers now we have started a network. And employers are calling us for their employment needs, and that you know I, that is great. I mean, I have I have been in this business where, and I'm sure other people have too. That when employment has been very uh, 
uh, not much. And it's, you know, this is a great opportunity when people start calling you and saying, hey, we have, you know, this and this and this. Um, and do you have the people to support that or people to fill in that? Um, you know, and I always feel like, you know, we need to be there. I, I, I do feel like follow following up is the best thing we can do with employers. I mean, I always use the use the phrase with my employment consultants that if we, you know, you know, we never stop and drop. You know, what I mean, we don't stop and drop. We don't put them in there and say, "Good enough." We'll see you later. We do as much as we can, as much we're funded for, to to still be with them as much as we can. Um, also, we now have. Uh, we also have created a message for employers too. And we've heard this in training, stuff like that, that we now represent clients, a new pool of people that have a very high attendance and retention rate, right? I mean, we've said this over and over and over. And now all of a sudden, as we get people into individual jobs and stuff like that, that now people are starting to realize that, that the attendance uh, of the people that we represent and support that they they come to work and you know uh i am sure that many people on this this um, webinar um have gone through this before that is something that you know uh, is very much appreciated right now um people just showing up to work and and wanting to work and being at work and having a good attitude when they come to work um so <clears throat> that being said, that has changed too, and it's very much appreciated with the job market as it is. Um, also, as an org and, and stuff like that too, I feel that, you know, I we, we kind of go through and understand, um, you know, we're going through the, the, the pathway, the employment pathway, and kind of understand and the way the funding is and that's always been an issue on the funding and how things work you know the 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 um the the how do we get the jobs and how do we you know most successful and i'm very much into you know the vrs working with dhs and the whole thing and i'm very much uh you know the the plans is set up for you know people and we're really going to get into that more and more of people with disabilities that you know first of all finding out you know what exactly is employment exploring it and then going into the employment find or employment plan and i'm really really love the employment plan if anybody asks i am huge in the employment plan because that tells me the story that is the story about the person and then we wrap that up in the waiver funding and stuff like that and that tells me the whole story and then we bring it into the find and we bring it to vrs and we package it all up and we give it to vrs and they say and they look at it and let's go find this person a job right let's go find him a job and i like it because a lot of times it'll wrap it up to the e1 and i like that because it gives us time it gives us time and we know that we're going to do some job coaching we know that we're going to have to have it ready because on the other side of it there's the keep right and we know that they're going to need something and so we're going to be ready for them on the other side and do the keep and i really you know express to people because i've had conversations across minnesota on how all this works just look at that how that guides everybody right plan and then also in the find and the key because we've been very fortunate and that is part of your org too because you know the people that go through all this they will be part of your organization for a very long time and that's how we've been successful getting people individual jobs and when they're on the other side of that you know they might need long-term support a lot of support or they might need just check-ins and that's all they need but they have been successful for what we need you know, VRS, and this is what I believe, VRS is to find the job, make sure they can do the job, right? And I believe the waiver is the blanket around them to make sure they're okay. They already can do the job, but the waiver is the blanket to make sure they're okay. 
And that's what I believe in. It might be argued, but that's the way it is. But that that's what I believe. So really do your homework on that. And, and that's the way that is. Um, so as always, everybody that knows me any, you know, I kind of navigate right into stories at the end, right? And that, so now you know I'm almost done. So a couple of examples, you know, also when we talk about individual employment and stuff like that, you know, there is another aspect to that too. There are people that you know are not comfortable with individual employment. There are people that want to go another avenue. And there, of course, there's self-employment and you don't hear much about that, but there is self-employment and you can go through VRS for self-employment, which they have their own parameters and stuff like that. I personally have not done that with anybody through VRS. Um, that is a whole thing, but we have not done that because there's a lot of requirements and we certainly will if anybody needs to go through that and navigate, but that's a whole thing that they do. But we have had some self-employment through the last seven years. Uh, we had you know, an individual several years back that he, he, you know, he just didn't know what he wanted to do, but he was close to retiring and he, his dream to write a book. He just wanted to write a book, you know what I mean? And sell it. And, and we don't know, I don't know offhand what earnings he wanted to do or whatever, but it was his dream. You know, Denise talked about dreams and he, you know, been in day services. He wanted a dream and he had write, written for a long, long time. And so then consultant put him through and did an art, a micro art grant and he got his book published and we had a little sh swing ding out in the community and stuff like that. He's now retired, but he got to do what he wanted to do. I'm working with somebody else that we put through uh, doing a micro grant right now. That's what he wants to do. He dedicated it to his father. It's going to be coming published soon. We're going to put it on Amazon, but that's what he wanted to do. That is his journey. And whatever earnings he makes or whatever, that's a small all thing that is what he wants to do and so we're going to do it because that's what they want to do that's their journey another person is is a, a, a more well known and, and way before my time had nothing to do with this individual i helped with some of the art grants but she has a huge support in her family uh, her name's susie and you can look online sunshine susie she has her own she was the first person that i came to had her own job as a, a hostess at the hotel and she's an inspirational speaker on her own behalf she goes around and travels and does that she also has her own self employed uh corn niblet business it is phenomenal i mean i've gone up and seen they got a whole thing that she does but she's very fortunate because she has a family uh whole family support and stuff like that unfortunately a lot of people don't have that but organizations like us you and everybody else can be that support with funding we can be also helpful that way and help people in in self-employment as well. There are grants out there. We can help people do what they want to do too. Um, and so that's self-employment. Um, the last part, you know, I, I hold employment very personally. I have three examples and I'll tell you why. Three examples of three individuals that are really different spectrums of, of, of employment. I'll tell you, first one is my son, my youngest son. My youngest son is on uh, the spectrum of autism, and he actually came out of high school, and, and we didn't have a lot of guidance in the, uh, of what he's going to do and stuff like that. And and so he went through, he went through, actually very grateful, he went through STEP, and he went through our employment consultants, and we did the spiel with him, and we, we did through everything I'm talking about and stuff like that, and I had to be hands-off because I'm dad, and I actually shouldn't be part of anything that he does anyway so he's very he's very you know self-efficient and but he needed some help and he needed some guidance and I'll be happy to say today that you know he's a year and a half into you know a job that he really enjoys because he's a mechanic not a mechanic but he does oil changes and tires and he likes to get dirty and he's just the opposite of I am I don't care about any of that stuff but he is a year and a half into his employment making good wages 
got his truck that he's driving and you know step does very little checks on him they do two times a a month and just to see with the employer if he's doing okay and that is his support system and he's doing fine that is one person in our family that's been supported by an org that cares and and he's been successful and he'll continue in employment very well the second one i have a a, a brother at 42 that you know was was doing not doing a lot and stuff like that and i had to talk to i thought there's more out for him to do he's very capable of, of cleaning other things he loved to clean he likes to do that not saying that that's the only thing to do but he loved doing that and so he went through step first had to convince my 78 year old mom that uh, maybe individual employment would be an avenue for him. And, and if I can convince my mom, I can convince, convince anybody. So that's a huge thing right there. But we got her convinced. And today he is like four years in. He is a custodian at a church, uh, at, a, at a small community, has done that for several years now. He also is a custodian at a uh, seven floor uh, apartment complex. And at that one, he enjoys uh, a, a great wage. He also is it's controlled uh, by the government. And so then he gets uh, paid vacations. He gets paid days off. And, you know, last year he enjoyed a nice trip to uh, New York because he's making a great wage and he gets to go do something he likes and he'll be very busy um, until this employment ends and we'll restart him again. But he's enjoying that as well. And the last one is is my youngest brother, uh, 32, that uh, passed away two years ago, and he had a, a lot of difficulties in a wheelchair, very, couldn't walk very well. And he, he, he was in day services at another place and then transferred to STEP and did, did, did peace rate and stuff like that. Uh, but as he... Uh, you know, near the end of his life, he 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 communicated to me that he wanted to go out in the community because he's a very outgoing person and he wanted to work, right? Because he was all about money because he liked to go gambling and he had to have cash for that. And he liked to buy football, uh, football uh, wallets and he just loved money, you know what I mean? And he was, he loved people and stuff like that. You know, and so, you know, we had jobs at apartment complexes and stuff like that. Well, what, how am I going to get him a job? You know what I mean? So we carved something out. It wasn't exactly customized, but we carved a job out for him back then. You know, it was right after COVID, you know, a little bit after, but we're still worried about things that in apartment complexes and stuff like that. We still need, you know, to be conscious about the cleaning and stuff like that. So we merely... You know, part of one of the cleaning things was seven floors. This apartment complex had railings and all the way down. Seven floors, railings, railings that needed to be wiped and sanitized because that was a must. And that was mandatory for that apartment complex. And so we took a job coach one hour, one, uh, one time a week. And we, we drove them all the way over to that apartment complex. And he, he could navigate... He didn't care, but he cared about this job. And so, you know, instead of checks of 32 cents, he would make, you know, 10 something, whatever minimum wage was that he would make that times two hours and he'd make that on his check and he'd have 20 something. And if you do that percentage wise, that's a huge earning increase for him. And he had started making some money. And, he, and, and so that was a huge success for him. He was proud of that. And that was carving it out for him. And I'm so grateful that we did that before we lost him because he wanted that in his life. And he, the biggest thing about that is he got to meet people. You know what I mean? And that is a huge success. And that's what we want for everybody that's out there is that we want that for the people that want that. And so I, I always bring that kind of story up because it means a lot to me. And so when I'm, I'm wrapping this up, I, I want to thank everybody for having me today. I mean, I'm honored to be here for this event and to talk to you. Uh, I hopefully show today that, you know, um, 
anything that I have a passion for what I do. And that's what I bring to the team. Um, and, uh, the success stories uh, come from everybody in the journeys. But the biggest thing is, is that try to do the best you can, because all we're trying to do is when somebody raises their hands and say, I want to do this just as Polo. And that was his name. He raised his hand and he said, I want a job. And I did the best I could. And, and he got it. And it was this much. That's that much of the journey for him. And that's all we're saying. So good luck to all the organizations on your journey of whatever you're doing. I applaud all of you. You're here. You're doing the best you can. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much to our speakers. Um, I, this is a time now for questions for any or all of our speakers. A lot of ground was covered um, over the past hour from branding, marketing, um, kind of more formal outreach to employers, engaging with, within your community, the employer community within your community, customized employment, self-employment, um, all of that. So please drop any questions you have either in the, in the chat or in the Q&A. Or um, if you you can raise your hand using the, the feature, raise hand, um, and we can unmute you and you can um, ask the question that way as well. So I see we have one question in the chat. Um, Denise, you referenced keeping the center open in order to not let anyone behind, not leave anyone behind. How are you ensuring that those who remain at the center want to be there, that it's their choice? If someone with high support needs wants to work, volunteer, or otherwise receive services in the community, how are you navigating the logistics to make that happen? Sure. Um, so we're fairly new into this journey, um, and we are hiring, have hired, and are um, hiring specialists uh, throughout our organization that will um, that are designed to work specifically with individuals in our. Um, licensed sites to provide a true informed choice about whether they want to work and doing uh, we've had people go through customized employment with um, Margie Webb we're doing a little bit more of a mini customized employment or discovery and that can be applied to um, people that are interested in work and not interested in work that can just be a where do you want to go in life we utilize a lot of the tools on the disability hub but the specialist positions are really going to be providing more exposure, more experiences, getting to know the person outside of Monday through Friday, nine until three. I, I liken it to, you know, you, you know me at work with my work hat on, but if you are with me outside of work, you're going to learn a lot more, a lot, a lot more um, about me than you do at work. And, and the same is true of the people that we support. So our goal is to um, allow them to um, get enough information about what work looks like, how benefits um, are affected, um, educate their teams, provide experiences, and they can make a choice um, of whether they want to work or not. And it's not a one and done, you know, that it's not just a, um, I've made this decision today and that's my lifelong decision. You know, you can move in and out of services based on what it is that you need. And, and providing that exposure to people, whether it be um, the community life engagement or or exploring employment, if you think about if if I'm if I'm in a day program and somebody asks me if I want to work, and what I know to be employment is cleaning or putting widgets together, if that's what employment means to me, I'm probably going to say no. Right. But if you say, if you bring me to all these different places and show me these things and then ask what I'm interested in, that's, that's probably going to be a different answer. So we do the best we can. Um, we're still new into it, but that's the journey we're taking. Hope that helped answer your question. Thanks, Denise. Any other questions from anyone?
while we wait for last call for questions, I'm going to drop two links in the chat here. The first is a very short um, survey. Oh, I see someone has a hand raised. So I'm going to I'm going to go to you, Richard. I'm going to allow you to talk and then I'll unmute you so you can so you can ask a question or provide your comment. Go for it, Richard. You may have to unmute yourself first, though. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is actually Corey. I was supposed to be at the meeting, but I'm actually virtual. So hopefully this isn't a silly question. Hopefully this isn't something that was said and I missed it. But um, in regards to STEP, I mean, it, that sounds great. Um, and I'm just wondering um, how that gets integrated into placement partners as a place where we can try to work with step to get employment for some of our clients i hope that wasn't a stupid question far, far as uh richard far as working with step is that what you're asking or i i, I don't know yeah like we have different I mean, when we're going out and looking for work, I mean, we're going on Indeed and then we have this other system where we uh, um, go on this spreadsheet and somebody kind of shows jobs for us. And it seems like STEP is, is an organization that's very successful at finding employment for disabled individuals. And I'm wondering how that's going to be, how we would as placement specialists work with STEP. Is that something that we'd be doing? I, 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 I think a I, 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 um, clarification question might be, what do you mean by placement specialist? Like what agency or organization are you connected with? Uh, uh, placement partners. Okay, so another provider. Do you mostly work within waiver or mostly work within vocational rehabilitation or both? Both. Did you hear that? Did you hear me respond? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm okay. I'm not understanding your organ. Okay. Your organization that that specializes in placement or your like step or yeah. Yeah, we're. Yeah, my job is to try to get employment for disabled people. Okay. So, my understanding was we were invited to this webinar because I thought that we would be working with STEP. But if this is just you, like a totally separate entity that's completely separate from us and aren't working with us, then then that it would explain that and. I was just asking that yeah, question. Yeah. I don't know. So That's step right. we invited, yeah, step and phase to talk about the approaches that they use. And one of the things that we appreciate um, about their perspective is that they have made the transition. They used to do work with folks with disabilities the old way, right? Maybe some subminimum wage work, uh, maybe just trying to find, find a person any old job, as opposed to what we know. A person's going to be successful in the job that's the right fit for them. We think about myself, you put me in a job as an accountant, I'm not going to last very long. I'm probably not going to be very nice to my coworkers in the process either, because it's just not a right fit for me. But I think, um, Corey, um, if you're interested in some of the, if you want to talk with either of these providers in more detail about some of the techniques that they use, and I'm, I'm, kind of speaking for both Dominic and Denise here, but I'm sure they would both be more than happy to set up one-to-one -one conversations and say, you know, what challenges are you coming across, Corey, with in placement partners in the service area where, work, where you're working? And perhaps Denise or um, Dominique can share some of the ways that they might get around those barriers or pivot. I don't know, is that helpful? Yeah, that's helpful. Uh, my apologies. I misunderstood what, what I was stepping into with the webinar. So I, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's my own fault. Um, yeah. No, so it's, yeah, it's, I, I appreciate, I appreciate your input. 
Yeah, no, that that that's totally fine. And thank you so much for for bringing that question. I think that I I, I do think that your question speaks to a desire for a lot of providers that are out there to be receiving more support. Um, in order to improve their services yeah. and explore more strategies. Um, and so you're definitely not alone there. I see that I'm having an unstable internet connection. So I'm sorry if I if I was choppy there. Um, but but yeah, so you're not alone in that in seeking more help and resources. And so that the point of this webinar was to for other providers that have had success in this area to share what they how they have found some of that success and what it looks like. Um, and I, I just a little plug I'll put out there for all the providers that are here is that as part of the Minnesota Transformation Initiative, MTI, we do work with providers. Right now we're working with Phase Industries um, in a sort of different, different project. We, we worked with Step in the past um, to provide providers with technical assistance, which is a fancy way of saying consulting, to help them consider different strategies um, and goals around improving their capacity for competitive integrated employment. And sometime within the next few months, we will likely have other opportunities for providers that are interested in, in working with us and receiving that support um, to do so. So if you do not yet receive the MTI newsletter, please um, sign up for that. And just to, to keep, keep aware of what is going on and what resources and supports are being offered for providers. Um, so I'm gonna drop that in the chat. Please sign up for the newsletter if you're not already getting it. Um, and I, I hear you, Corey, like the need for, for more support around these topics for providers. Thank you so much for bringing that. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. We have a couple more questions in the, the Q&A box here. First is, how do you figure out what goes into the development and exploration part of this journey? I have searched DB101 and the hub, but am still struggling figuring out exactly what needs to be done, templates, et cetera. Who is that too? I'm sorry. Um, anyone. So Denise oh. or Dominique. Can you re-say uh, re that again? The question? I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. How do you figure out what goes into the development and exploration part of this journey? I have searched DB101 and the hub, but I'm still struggling figuring out exactly what needs to be done, templates, et cetera. So the okay. development and exploration pieces. Um, yeah, I can I can speak to some of that. So the Disability Hub is really a great resource for sure. Um, there, there's so much information on there and they keep adding information. Sometimes it can be tough to navigate because you hit a link and then you hit another link and before you know it, you just, you don't even know how to get, get back to where you went. But if you look at the, um, the E1MN framework, the Engage, Plan, Find, Keep, at in that framework, it says what the intended outcomes are. So for example, engage your exploration. Um, the intended outcome is that a person makes an informed choice about whether they wanna work or not. And in the hub is um, more descriptors of what that looks like and the activities that take place, just some examples of some activities that take place during employment exploration. Um, creating uh, work experiences, looking at um, benefits, how they how they may affect work. And then the same with the plan phase, um, same concept on the hub for that as well. Um, and then if you have the opportunity to go through customized employment and discovery training with Margie Webb at Deed, uh, that, that in itself encompasses um, the plan phase. I would encourage you to do that. Thank you for the setup, Denise. This is a great opportunity to plug the fact that um, VRS is offering free customized employment this year to providers. Um, Margie Webb leads that. Um, I believe the next cohort will start at the end of April. So um, if you're interested in attending or sending one of your staff to that training, um, you can, I'll, I'll drop my email in the chat. I, connect, I can connect you with Margie Webb. Um, also, Denise, thank you for um, referencing the um, Disability Hub MN. I did put that link in the chat as well um, for, for you all to, to check that out. 
Dominique, is there anything you wanted to add to that question? Uh, no, I mean, it, 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 we don't do a lot of exploration. We've been not been asked to do a lot of that. You know, when we have, we've we've kind of put it together. You know, there's like uh, Denise said, there's a lot of information all together. You know, we've we've created a lot ourselves. You know, when they when they show it, show it, there's a lot of, uh, you know, business tours. There's there's um, there's a lot of workout experiences, shadowing. Uh, it, it's a wide gamut. And so we try to, as, a, as an org, try, uh, we do bits and pieces. We take a lot from the hub um, all over and try to tailor it, you know, for our organization um, to put it together for something, you know, for my employment consultants to, to package it up. So we're kind of all on the same frame, but uh, there's a lot of good information and, and, you know, as an organization you can try to put it together yourself as well, you know, too. So All right, another question. Um, I think this is for, for both of your organizations as well. Um, do you also work with schools and students currently in transition programs? Yes, yes, uh, we work with a lot of students um, throughout our entire service region. Um, we've got at least one staff, one employment consultant that that's all she does is provide the pre-employment transition services or, or pre-ets. Um, with students throughout our service region. So was the question just that, do we do it? It was, it was, it was um, posted anonymously. So if anyone, whoever posts okay. that wants to, has any more specific follow-up questions about it, please do. But I'm just going to toss out there, especially since the focus of this was um, engaging employers, if you do anything with employers also within your, the, the school services that you provide to students. So the example that I gave earlier about the um, person that was working at that co-op was actually a student, uh, a pre-ed student um, that ended up getting hired on. So that's a, an example of how we engage them and how the connections work. Yeah, we do do some pre uh probably not as much as Denise does, uh, just because we are, uh, for VRS, we are a limited provider, so we're kind of limited on that. Uh, we will will continue to to increase as we go, uh, being a car for accredited. I'm looking forward to that, too, because there's much many more programs that I'm interested in creating and doing with as uh, far as pre as well. Um, so um, that kind of limits us limits us as well so um, we will be doing more as we go on in the next year or so all right thanks all right this is the last call for any final questions someone may have again drop it in the q a box raise your hand ah i see we have someone else raise their hand i'm gonna unmute hey bob you can unmute yourself and speak there we go Hi, everybody. Uh, Bob Wagner. Um, let's see, where would I start? Um, I, when I was 49, I, uh, I, well, for, I just want to thank you for being at the table. You got in this business because you thought you could make a difference, right? Because you wanted to make a difference and use a gift given to you. Um, when you help people get a job, so I'm not asking questions so much as um, just expressing my gratitude. Um, I, um, had a fateful day in the Pacific and broke my neck and damaged my spinal cord. And I wasn't home for 22 months as I rehabbed. But going back to work helped me feel like I was getting my life back. So that's what it's all about. When you help a person get a job as a regular individual in the community, that changes their life. They're, they're today, they're tomorrow, and their future. You're like great teachers and great parents. You make a difference. And I just want to say that it's really about that transformation. That's why you do this business. Change is hard. Okay. But um, I'm just grateful that you've embraced this change. And uh, you are always about doing good things. But getting people employed, one job, one person at a time, um, believing that. D Dominique, I really want to thank you for, um, for going to that place of it really starts a belief. You know, if you believe, you can find a way. If you if you don't, if you if you admire the the problems, you won't get there. But so anyhow, just express my gratitude. 
I worked at Ramsey County Disability Services for nearly two decades. I was the employment lead there. Um, I was the employment lead prior to my injury, but I have to tell you, my injury gave me obviously new insights, appreciation for work. And I just want to, you know, again, just express my gratitude. Uh, this is what it's all about. You get in this business to make a difference, and nothing makes a bigger difference with people than getting a job. If they don't have a job, they're living in poverty. Really that simple. So anyhow. Thanks so much, Bob. Yeah. I I I always I always hate following you up, Bob. You always have like such great, um, inspiring and motivating words. Really appreciate you sharing that insight. Um, we do have a couple other questions. I'm gonna start with how this one's geared towards step. It looks like how does step get individuals to job sites at say 5 a.m. Um, also, some um, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities need help with their scheduled medications, question mark after that. So I'm assuming that's asking, how do you manage that when they have to get to work that early? Um, how do you um, deal with people who might need help with um, toy with going to the bathroom, other kind of activities of daily living, and have you gotten pushback? Well, uh... Uh, transportation, you know, we, we, we have that set up I mean, we, you know, far as, uh, job coaching and stuff like that, we have transportation provided them I mean, we, we switched into a huge fleet, you know what I mean? So we have some of that, uh, that covered, uh, obviously depending on the individual and, and, and the way uh, it's navigated, we, you know, that's all part of the plan. You know, that's the part that I talked about did you going through the waiver and, 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 uh, doing the plan first is that we navigate and find out what needs are before we begin. Uh, able to do public transportation, unable to do, and obviously, you know, in rural Minnesota and stuff like that is huge. I'm, I'm, it's always about transportation and how we're going to connect that together um, and stuff like that. Uh, so we navigate all that part of our scheduling. I mean, our schedule is um, right now uh, almost seven pages long. Um, trying to navigate that for job coaches and stuff like that. So we do have job coaches that um, uh, uh, get individuals if they need um, job coaching. We have jo job coaches that are 100% there um, for this for this uh, uh, specific thing. I mean, it has nothing to do with the job. As I said, it, it's the blanket around the person because of the supports that they need, not doing the job, but other things that need to be taken care of. And, and that is why we're there for them. Um, that's that zero to 100% support. And that kind of answers the question to all those questions is that that is what we're there for to do. Not the job, but the support around it. Thanks, Tammy. There's also a follow-up question to the the question about schools. If you worked with schools and it uh, it's, Will it be possible to know some schools or primary school districts that you work with? I'll leave it up to you two if you want to share that, but maybe I'll add in there. Um, how did you connect with, if, if you know, how did your organizations make those initial connections with those schools? Yeah, so um, CTIC meetings, every school district belongs to some sort. And what does it, what does it stand for? Brian, do you remember what it stands for? <laughs> I knew you were going to put me on the spot. I was just going to look it up. I can never, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to look it up, everybody. I'll put it in the chat. So it's, um, it, so we're part of a school's, these transition um, programs in Pine, Chisago, Isani, Kennebec, Mille Lacs counties. And each one has a little bit um of a different makeup of who attends those, but there's a variety of different special ed teachers, voc rehab counselors, county case managers. Um, some are just the teachers, but they're focusing on students that are gonna be transitioning out of school or moving into a transition program. And so connecting with them um, is a great way to get in. Um, one school just reached out to me, you know, a year ago, and I helped them put together a, a student transition fair for students and their families to get all kinds of resources of what they need to know 
as their student is graduating from school. We're doing another one this year as well. Um, but that would be my recommendation on where to start. And what does it mean, Brian? It means community transition interagency committee. That is a mouthful. Um, that is so exciting, the work that, that you're doing with um, these transition schools. Um, it's an all hands on deck approach. Special education teachers do great work, but sometimes they just don't have a lot of experience with the what employment supports look like, right? And so to be there as a provider and say, hey, look, here, you're getting some great support in the school, but um, you can also get support outside of school. And when you're in transition school, you can access supports through vocational rehabilitation services. And I also think it's beneficial when you're at CTICS to be talking with students and their parents or guardians about what do services look like when you leave transition school, when you yep. go on to the adult world. Um, so yeah, that's it's it's great for providers to be there. Thanks, uh, Denise. I just want to add one more thing on how to make those connections. Um, if you're not sure who, where, what, or how to connect with the CTICS in your region, um, you can go on the Voc Rehab website and find your pre representatives and contact them and ask them to make the introduction, the connection um, of you to those schools and those transition programs. Yeah, I, I think it's a great thing. I mean, you know, I, I actually was on one of those that had a fair and had everybody at the table at, at one time. And we had some families and, and it was an OK turnout, but I wish it was bigger. I mean, being a parent of a of a of a son, I wish you, we didn't have a lot of that in the area at that time. And I wish that we had more of that and we'll continue to promote that. It, what a, a great opportunity to walk in a room and have all services in one room, right? I mean, I, I being in this field, uh, you know, I feel that, you know, I, I, I know a lot of things, but when you're the parent, I feel sometimes that I, I still don't know a lot of things and I feel very challenged and, and I feel, you know, sympathetic to other families that have a lot of challenges and stuff like that. And what a great opportunity to promote that and have everything in one, one room, right? VRS, uh, uh, the steps, the phases, whatever, in one room and go around and talk to everybody in an hour or two hours and, and answer all your questions and stuff like that. So I'm very much a promoter of those kind of organizations getting together and doing that. So, All right, we have two minutes left. One question that I think will be a quick one. So I'm going to give everyone 30 seconds to answer this one um, before we wrap it up, which is do your job coaches also provide on-site programming or do they only job coach? The what provide on-site? Job coaches. Do they only provide on-site? Uh, do they also provide on-site, which I'm assuming means center-based services, um, or they only job coach? We have a blend. Um, we have employment consultants that all they do is focus on employment, um, finding work or helping people find jobs and then um, helping them maintain them. We have these specialist positions now that we've um, created where they will be providing services on site, going through the exploration and the planning, but then they'll also be providing um, assistance with finding a job and keeping a job. So it's a mix. Yeah, we have employment consultants, as you know, work towards me, but we also, you know, we started this with uh, direct support workers. We're now dividing off and we will, you know, they were working in day services and in employment as job coaches. We are now going to spread that apart because there's definitely, you know, some differences and we're going to go more into different training for day services, DSPs and job coaching because, there are a lot of differences and we're going to really hone in on employment job coaches out in the field. You're by yourself, you're coaching and stuff like that and, and communicating with employers, which is different than day services and really honing on both. So. Thank you so, so much to all three of our presenters today for the great information um, and experiences that you shared with everyone. Um, our next, MTA's next quarterly training will be May 16th, topic to be announced, but you can, if you sign up for the MTA newsletter, you'll get information about that. You can also check our website for updates on that. 
I dropped a link for a very short evaluation for this training in the chat. So please take just a few minutes to fill that out and provide us with any recommendations you have for future topics. That's super helpful. Um, all right, we're, we're one minute over, so I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you, Dominique, Denise, Caitlin. Um, everyone have a great rest of your day.